Okay, hello everybody. I hope you can hear me and I'm audible to all of you, right? Can I get some confirmation? If you can hear me, just say uh, anything would be fine. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks for the confirmation. <laughs> okay, okay, thanks. I, I got a lot of confirmations. Thank you very much. Okay, so my name is Pranav and uh, here we are going to talk about, uh, so we are on a date with data. And specifically, we are going to talk about Python and data science. So uh, we will first we will talk about some basics of data, data science domain, and various job roles uh, into it. And then we will also see a demo that how using Python, a machine learning algorithm can be used to take certain business decision. And uh, the entire this this is the first. Uh, talk or you can say first webinar in this uh, long webinar series. So we are starting with machine learning. We will also in the next series, we will uh, next uh, uh, next talks. We will also uh, see demo on Power BI, Tableau, Excel, uh, SQL, deep learning, all these uh, uh, concepts uh, and uh, all these tools, skills uh, which are used in data science. In future talks, we will uh, we will uh, we will also uh, learn about those things as well. And the entire program, the entire uh, the series is being conducted by the virtual internship program of uh, uh, NAI. And so let's begin, let's start. Uh, first, uh, let's uh, understand why we are here. So like I mentioned that we are going to discuss about data science domain. We will explore some fields of it and then some applications of data science in uh, in practical uh, field, like in our um, real life uh, business problems, a uh, career prospects we are going to see, and decision tree demo we will uh, we will do, and also a little bit about uh, VIP as well. So uh, I see that many of you are uh, kind of asking. Um, Oh, okay, I see that there are many comments about uh, if you will get a certificate or not for attending the session. So don't worry, uh, you will get one. Uh, how can we attend all these future webinars? Uh, so just stay connected with us <laughs> and you will get to know. Uh, just like you, uh, you go, receive, received an email and you registered. Similarly, uh, in future you will receive an email or maybe you can come to this channel and uh, uh, whenever we are scheduling, when we are going live, you can uh, you can get to know about it. Okay, before we go there, before we uh, proceed with uh, the di different domains of data science, I just want to understand um, uh, from where you all are, like which location, and uh, also, so can in comments, can you please mention your location and also. Uh, your interest into data science, or data analyst, or business analyst. Or if you are not sure about it, you can say, or you can also mention that uh, no idea. I mean, if you are exploring, <laughs> okay? So your location, and uh, uh, either you want to go into data science field, data analyst, or uh, business analyst, or not sure. Okay, not getting, oh, yeah, I got a response, yes, and okay, that means uh, I'm not sure uh, in which domain you are going. Okay, data science, okay. 
so here we need to say data science there are more than 100 people uh, watching right now so uh, mumbai exploring okay uh, not sure no worries uh, hopefully uh, this session will clarify some things for you uh, not sure again from vijayawada interest in data science from new delhi data analyst okay data science not sure data science data analyst so we see both we saw one uh, business analyst also okay sql data science data analyst business analyst currently working at ai engineer alif rahman from bangladesh okay i believe that you are already working on machine learning algorithms developing tools using those algorithms not sure about field data analyst from calcutta data science from bhubaneswar okay uh, we have a couple of ai developers also oh great i got a fair idea that uh, here we have uh, some people who are uh, who want to go into data science and uh, business analyst as well as uh, we have data analyst uh, 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 people also no worries uh, we will talk about all these three okay uh, data science uh, damilola okay great okay okay when we talk about data science uh, job wise we have these three things either you want to uh, become a data actually we also have fourth one data engineer so we will talk about the job uh, uh, job prospects uh, later on but overall on a broader uh, level on a higher level we are either working on machine learning algorithms or some advanced algorithms uh, from it like deep learning we can use or even ai uh, everywhere we are using machine learning concepts or we are doing data visualization and uh, the o, the o, the big bigger domain we are calling uh, here data science so machine learning uh, we are using to create an ai or, or artificial intelligence systems uh, programs and uh, trying to see that how computers can learn like humans how they can automatically learn a data visualization kind of we are trying to visualize the data when we now many of you may have watched uh, suppose uh, let's take uh, i'm not sure if you are uh, a fan of uh, game of thrones or harry potter uh, series or not but how many of you have read the books and how many you have watched the movies or the series now visualizing something is much easier uh, you can understand it easily and in shorter time and that's the way data visualization comes into picture the major role of data visualization is that we can grasp difficult patterns or like difficult analysis also we can understand we can find hidden patterns in the data and then we have data science it's uh, involves a plethora of disciplines and expertise it may contain some data visualization as well as machine learning deep learning anything can be there and uh, it's actually everywhere the field of data science or machine learning it's everywhere uh, you think of any field Uh, like entertainment route optimization healthcare government everywhere we have it these are just four uh, uh, four domains uh, a very um, interesting example i believe that you have at least one social media app in your mobile phone either facebook instagram or linkedin can you open either of like any of those three uh, uh, these three apps can you please open and scroll down into it go to any promoted uh, post so we see a sponsored post or we see a promoted post can you please go to any of those i am also opening uh, and uh, um, i am also scrolling down so i have opened facebook and i am scrolling down to a sponsored post and i got one i got a, a sponsored post from a business school any app any social media app you can open facebook um, instagram linkedin twitter anything go to any sponsored post just scroll down and you uh, go to the more options of that post like you see ellipsis button three dots uh, press on it and then you will see 
that uh, there is something called why I am seeing this ad. So there, is, there, there are advertisements, these posts are advertisements and you have a question, why am I seeing this ad? You tap on that and you will get some regions. You will get some um, kind of uh, categorization. You, you will see some something that why Facebook or why Instagram, why LinkedIn is showing you this particular advertisement or a sponsored post. And there are some data. So I see that uh, uh, it's saying that uh, uh, the business school is trying to reach out to people who are in Singapore and uh, who communicate in English UK or English US and that's why I'm seeing this ad. In your case it may be something different but there will be some reason there will be something related to data and that that data is what Facebook um, um, has taken from us and accordingly it's showing us the advertisements. So if you think that you are using Facebook for free or Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn for free, then my friend, you are mistaken. There is nothing for free in this world. So for these companies, we are the raw product, sorry, raw materials, our data, our information, they are raw materials and they are using analytics on our data and accordingly they are showing us advertisement. So we have machine learning applications everywhere. And here we have some examples like um, uh, entertainment in entertainment business. Uh, we, uh, we have Netflix, it uses big data, it uses, uh, uh, it, it uses analytics even to decide uh, what, uh, who all they should cast in a specific series. So there is a very interesting um, uh, huge case for House of Cards series on 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 Netflix that how Netflix decided that what characters they should cast or which act, actor or actors they should cast. Uh, similarly, uh, you remember in if you use Netflix or Amazon Prime, Hotstar or even YouTube earlier they didn't have a skip button. The skip or like go forward 10 seconds, go backward 10 seconds. So when people were skipping certain portions like intro part or credits part at the end. Then they tried to, um, then the company tried to include those features. That was done on the basis of some analytics on user data. So we have uh, in entertainment industry also, uh, huge cases of machine learning and uh, data science. Similarly, um, Uber Eats, depending on the preference, it uh, gives a recommendation. Uh, you go to your health sector, in health sector also we have uh, 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 health analysis and predictions, disease prediction, for example, cancer care recommendations. So we have in hospitality sector also machine learning. You go to um, the government sector or law enforcement agencies, we have a crime analysis uh, on facial recognition. They try to understand if the person is a suspect or not. So there are n number of practical applications of machine learning in uh, the in, in the real life from our day to day work everywhere we have data science and we cannot escape it. So better learn it and use it for our uh, uh, for our like uh, to, to make our life easier and also to explore our job opportunities that's available there in the market. So when it comes to career prospects in data science, uh, definitely the first question comes that which job is good for you? Which uh, job you want to do and which one uh, would suit your uh, your expertise? Okay, we have some question about internship. Uh, we, will, uh, we will talk about the internship later on. And uh, uh, will we get the certificate? Uh, okay, it was mentioned in the form that you will get, so you will get one, don't worry. Okay, moving forward with career prospects. So there are many. I mentioned earlier that we have, a, you can become a data engineer. So it's a kind of, you can go like this. If you if you if you have technical knowledge of some programming language uh, apart from python and r like java and uh, java c some some web development or software development language also 
then you can uh, learn machine learning and uh, you can go into data engineering field. Uh, you need a technical expertise to build platform and a structure for data collection. So for example, for web scrapping, you are developing a tool for web scrapping. So there you are going to use data, uh, uh, you, are go you are going to do a work of data engineer. When you have data, when you have such data and uh, then you want to design machine learning uh, models onto it, then you are doing a work of data scientists. So those who are data scientists and data engineers, these two job roles are uh, more or like, like it's a back-end job. They get uh, paid well, they get more money, <laughs> and uh, but they are mostly into back-end. Uh, their jobs are not client facing or not uh, like into uh, they they even though they do not have very strong business understanding that's fine but they should have uh, knowledge of data scientists should have knowledge of stats mathematics should be strong if you are not good in probability uh, and calculus then maybe learn it if you want to go into data science field uh, then we have data analysts uh, the role of data analyst uh, is to become a mediator between a data scientist and business analyst. Business analysts are uh, those people who have a strong business understanding, even though they may not have very strong mathematics knowledge or programming knowledge or machine learning algorithm knowledge, that's fine. But they should have data visualization knowledge. They should have uh, knowledge of BI tools, business intelligence tools like Tableau, Power BI. They should be able to create charts, pivot table, analysis in Excel. So, uh, and and definitely they should have business uh, understanding, a strong business understanding so that they can provide recommendations to the stakeholders, to the company people. And a data analyst, they should have some knowledge of business analyst as well as some data scientists. So they are uh, mediator, they do a statistical analysis, they generate insights, they coordinate with uh, data scientists for data models and they coordinate with business analysts when they generate insights that if it, it's okay or not, it makes some sense or not. So now I believe you have some uh, basic idea of uh, how uh, these two, four roles are different. Again, if you want to go into business side, if you have a strong business knowledge, but you are not good into machine learning algorithms, you can target for uh, business analyst jobs. Uh, if you if you are an introvert, if you want to stay behind the curtain and like and work uh, like uh, uh, in back end, then you can go for data engineer or data scientist jobs. Data analysts are some uh, is someone who can coordinate between these good communication skill as well as uh, uh, basic understanding of maths, uh, a little bit of programming knowledge as well as a bit, little uh, knowledge of business understanding as well. I, I hope uh, those who are asking about not sure, who are not sure, they can, uh, they have some clarity over it. Uh, there are many uh, good articles on, uh, uh, you just look for, uh, even though you are not going for articles, you look for your dream company, okay? Search your dream company, search for a job description of that company. Look for the skills they are asking for. So find data scientists, suppose you want to work in a company, uh, maybe Amazon, okay? So data scientist job description of Amazon of find a find a job post of Amazon data scientist. Look at the skills what they are asking for. Then data analyst and business analyst also. And whatever I mentioned just now, uh, you will find some similarity over there. So you have to uh, uh, you you have to be a specific um, while learning and deciding which field you want to go into. Okay. Moving ahead, this is a rough figure, okay? <laughs> uh, average uh, uh, yearly annual salaries. So uh, we don't, we could not cover all the countries. Here I see uh, that uh, there are people from uh, three, four different countries. If you can find the, uh, your country name in the list, you can uh, have a look and uh, uh, you can see that how the salaries are uh, varying. Uh, depending on the countries for this data scientist role. But again, it's uh, uh, data scientists uh, 
uh, role is a different one and data analyst business analyst roles are different so i hope that you have understood the difference between the skills required and uh, this is just to give an idea that how much you can aim for <laughs> okay I mentioned that uh, everywhere we have demand for data scientists, data analysts, or business analysts. These skills are demanded everywhere, and uh, some like top ten companies, uh, maybe which hire on very frequent, which hire very frequently uh, for these roles, uh, are these. Now, if uh, any of these countries are into your dream list, uh, maybe you can <laughs> uh, you, you can target and you can look for the job description for those in, in those companies. Okay, in comment, I see uh, Harshit says, I completed data, big data course, and I want to learn data science course. Good, I believe when you have worked on big data, you have worked on something similar to Hadoop or maybe SQL servers, uh, handling data in the back end. But uh, when we have data, what next? Though that this question uh, is answered in data science. We create models, after models, what next? We apply into real life for predictive analytics. So that's what we do. We have a second question. Will this video be available for future reference? Uh, it should be. And, uh, and uh, um, it will be available on this channel. OK. So. Um, and that's what a uh, brief about data science field. Now um, we are going to work on a decision tree algorithm. So this is not a hands-on, this is a demo. So I have already created, written the code. I will just quickly go through it that how I will just show the flow of the uh, decision tree algorithm. A decision tree is a machine learning algorithm in, and uh, we are going to use Python programming language for this. Uh, those who have some exposure to data science, I believe you are aware of a decision tree, but still those who are completely new or just in case you do not remember, so to refresh your mind, we are going to uh, look into uh, look, look into uh, the, the codes as well, the introduction as well. So what is a decision tree? Basically, we are trying to teach computers how to take decisions like humans. So in real life, we think of a question uh, while taking a decision, we think of many questions and then decide if we should do this or not, do something or not. So similar to that, uh, machines also work. This algorithm also works. Uh, we take decisions. So decision is the name and tree because the way it uh, separates a data uh, asking different questions at the end it becomes a tree like a structure so uh, in a decision tree it's a systematic tree step diagram and it is used to so probable outcome of various inputs probable outcomes because we are not god right <laughs> we cannot uh, 100 percent uh, accurate in our predictions so that's why probable outcome we have to guess and uh, then uh, uh, with, with certain accuracy we we give the predictions various inputs like ask the questions uh, it has joint notes with if else statements so we'll uh, we will see this don't worry it has binary answer true false or yes or no uh, in its branches so what are branches what is joint notes we will see that and at the end, we get our final answer when no more scenarios are left to add in. Uh, for example, uh, if I have to locate you, I will start with countries, okay? Or maybe continent. I don't know uh, because here we have some people who are supposed, uh, so right now I'm in Singapore and it's in Asia, but we have people who are in, into different places uh, and from different continent also. So I will take a bigger uh, set. I will take, uh, I will go to, uh, so if I have to identify you, I will ask a question, are you from Asia? If yes, then I will ask different questions. Are you from support India? Are you from Pakistan? Are you from Nepal? Are you from Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia? And depending on that, yes, no, yes, no will be there. Then the next question I will ask for a state or province, and then I will ask for city, and then maybe I will, uh, I will know from where you are. So 
yes and no. Only yes and no goes into a decision tree. And that's how we ask questions. Okay. Now, uh, in real life also, uh, we take decisions uh, similar to decision tree and how actually we do. For example, we want to go out. You want to carry something? So you will ask uh, that, is it raining? If no, don't bring anything, just go out, enjoy your day. But if it's, run, uh, it's raining, then you ask another question, is it windy? If no, you take your umbrella, go out, enjoy your day. Or if it's windy, then it's extremely windy. If no, take a raincoat, go out, enjoy your day. Or if it's uh, extremely windy, then stay at home and enjoy your day. The point is, in all of these situations, you have to enjoy your day, whatever decision you take, right? So this is, as uh, uh, you can see, it's a tree structure, but upside down. We have branches. At the end, we call leaf nodes. We will, we will see that. Uh, so it's upside down uh, tree structure, and that's why we call it decision tree. And there may be various examples. Are you a healthy person? Then age-wise, then you decide, uh, then you ask questions like your eating habits, your exercise habits, yes, no, and uh, then you decide if uh, uh, you are fit or unfit. So fit means suppose uh, zero, and unfit means one, or anything you can, you can take, true, false, you can take. So there will be only two answers. Uh, there is a very interesting um, uh, game, uh, or you can say a website, akinator.com. Um, it asks you a lot of questions. Uh, you can you, you think of a character name in your mind. It will ask you a lot of questions. Based on your questions, it will predict. It will uh, it will tell you that which character name you have thought of. So maybe after the session you can try this out. We'll share the link later on. So in decision tree, we have uh, various uh, terminologies. We will not go into all. But here, uh, the first question that we ask is the root node. And from root node, we get branches and get a decision nodes so where we ask another question. And uh, at the end, when we do not have any other question, that's called a leaf nodes. Like in a tree, after, leaf, uh, after leaves, we do not have anything. So something similar to that happens in this algorithm also. Uh, so we are going to look into the algorithm, okay? And we are going to see how actually it works. So let's try that. I mentioned that uh, Okay, uh, I see some of, there are some questions. Uh, how can I learn Power BI Tableau? Uh, okay, so this um, event, this this uh, webinar is a part of, uh, um, uh, is, is a part of uh, a series uh, or webinar series organized by a virtual internship program of NAI. They do give training on Power BI and Tableau also. We will talk about that uh, at, towards the end. If you have any question, I can answer it over there. Um, how will we get certificate? Don't worry about it. Let's uh, first focus on uh, the demo, okay? Uh, at the end, we will uh, will answer your such questions. Uh, all questions will, uh, will, maybe these questions will share. Okay, um, so here we have um, predicting salary using decision tree. So using Python, uh, we are going to predict uh, salaries. And uh, why we are doing that? Suppose you want to apply for a company. So in this sample, we have taken uh, three companies and we are going to see uh, based on the company name. So our data looks like this. We have company name, job or position and degree and salary more than 100,000 uh, or, uh, or or not. 100,000, that means one lakh dollar. So we have uh, $100,000 more than that or not. So zero and ones we have. Now, we have three values. Now this data set is, uh, uh, is kind of, uh, just a sample created for this demo only. So we have only these many records. 
and we have three company jbc pharma facebook and google we have in job description we have three different uh, values sales executives business manager and computer programmer in degrees we have two different values so these uh, these uh, three inputs these three inputs are basically our um, and these three columns will basically uh, be our input and the last one will be our output so what will happen so we are going to ask we are going to fit this data into decision tree and on the basis of these three uh, columns we are going to check if the salary will be more than hundred thousand dollars or not so we will not go into much detail of how uh, which uh, uh, libraries we have used and why we have used. Uh, the agenda here is to show you uh, a demo that how decision tree actually works. The workflow we are going to talk about. We are not going to talk about the codes in detail. Okay. So this is how the data uh, uh, appears. And uh, so we have got data using a uh, new library. We have got data into our notebook, uh, this Python notebook. And uh, then we are going to decide which columns should be our input and which should be our output. So why we do this? Because just like for your final exams, you have exams. Before that, you do mock preparation, mock tests you try to give for your preparation. So uh, in, in mock preparation, you, you answer the questions, OK? And then towards the end, you match your answers if these are correct or not. So something similar to that happens in machine learning. We have training and testing data. Here we are not going to split the data into training or testing, but here we are going to just decide which ones are our input on the basis of what we are going to decide. For example, on the basis of today's temperature, uh, you can predict that how many ice creams will be sold at a shop. So in that same location, what is the temperature of the day? If it's winter, then less ice creams will be sold. If it's uh, summer, uh, it's hot outside, then more ice creams will be sold. Something similar to that. So we have like uh, temperature will be input and our target will be number of ice creams sold or the revenue of the ice cream shop. So we have got input and target, and here we are going to display it. So we got input, output. The problem is computer doesn't understand the text. Alphabet, it will not understand. It, un it understands only uh, numbers. So we are going to convert. So using this um, a library, or you can say a method, uh, label encoder, it's going to convert these values uh, into numbers. So how it's going to do? So ABC pharma. It starts with A, so alphabetically it's coming first. It will become zero. Then Facebook will become two, and Google will become three. Sorry, uh, zero, one, and two. Google will become two. Facebook will become one, and ABC Pharma zero. Same will go will happen for job and degree also. And at the end, our output will appear like this. You see, for for ABC Pharma, it's zero in company. And for Facebook, we have one, and for Google, we have two. In job code, sales executive is starting with S, so two. B, business manager, so zero, and computer programmer, so one. Similarly, degree code, bachelor zero, and master's one. So we have these, uh, these uh, uh, like conversion done. Now computer can understand the, the words, uh, sorry, the numbers it can understand, and we can remove the words, or we can remove the text data and for that we are just going to set a new input so input new we are setting and we are dropping the previous uh, the older uh, columns where we have text data so our new input is this one and we already have our target so we have a finalized this process is called data cleaning in in work, while working on any machine learning algorithm the steps are that we acquire data data acquisition then we explore data or we try to understand it. Data understanding or we call EDA, exploratory data analysis. So we try both. We do both actually uh, just to understand our data. And then once we understood, uh, once, once we have understood it, 
that what the problems are, um, then we try to clean the data accordingly. We do data preparation. And after that, uh, we decide what will be our input, output. We split the data if required. Into this demo, we are not going to split the data uh, because we are using a very dummy data, sort, sort data we are using uh, to understand the flow of the decision tree. So we have our data inputs we have, we have our output. Now we are bringing decision tree classifier. Now this, uh, uh, you can say this is an object uh, which are designed, uh, which has been uh, uh, added into Python uh, as a module and we have imported it. We are applying this uh, module or this object which contains a lot of functions inside it and whatever data we put into it, it processes the data accordingly. Just like in a machine, um, we, or, or when in Excel you are creating a chart. So you put your data, you add your data, and then you, um, then you show it to, uh, then you add it to, select it and then click on uh, create chart. It does something in the back end and uh, show you the chart. So what it does in the back end are different functions, different algorithms, different codes. And similar to that in decision tree also, we have different codes. Okay. So once we have got the data, we are going to fit, uh, put uh, in, uh, add the data into it. So we are going to fit the model. So we have created a model instantiating the model and then we are going to get data in inside it and we have fit the data now our uh, model has been trained on our model is uh, training is done our model knows what to do uh, on what type of uh, on, on what different inputs and then it will be able to uh, do some predictions so let's see how it's working in the back in, in the background so actually it's working like this the decision tree classifier that we used earlier you like uh, here that we brought i mentioned that it's kind of an object or, or a module which contains a lot of functions and codes inside it so what those codes are doing they are splitting the data like this they are going on company and then uh, is it from Google? Yes or no? If yes, then Google coming here. If no, then is it from Facebook? Yes or no? Is it from ABC Pharma? Depending on the company, company just doing the splitting and then depending on a job designation and then degree. And then it's deciding um, that uh, if you are, suppose now you are applying to Google as a computer programmer and uh, you have a master's degree then you will get more than $100,000 annual salary. So now when you are going for interview in Google, you can demand this salary, right? Uh, in Facebook, doesn't matter which job position you are looking at or, uh, or, or uh, like what, uh, what degree you have, you will get more than 100,000 as per this data. I have already Zoom data like I see it's, it should be visible. Uh, maybe because of the live, the clarity may not be there. Uh, code is visible. Actually, I also see on my screen that how the live, uh, uh, how in the live screen it's appearing. I can see the code. However, we are focused on understanding the flow. Uh, the coding part uh, may become a bit complicated, complicated. If you try to understand it, you will miss the flow you will miss the structure uh, of uh, decision tree. So this is how classifier is working. Uh, it can go from one branch to another and it finally it will say yes or no, more than $100,000 salary or not. Now our model is ready, we can predict. So, uh, and also we are going to uh, look at the score. Uh, we are going to check the score of the model. It's showing 100%, 1.0 means 100%. And this is because uh, uh, we have used uh, a very small data and same data we have used for training and uh, similar data we are using on the testing also. So uh, a kind of, suppose, suppose you have, uh, I give you two questions, you will learn it. You will memorize it, okay? Whenever I ask the answers, you will be able to answer. 
but uh, if i ask if i give you 50 questions or 100 questions you won't be able to learn all uh, so that's what happened uh, that um, that also happens in machine learning when you give a small data set the model will learn it so it will give you higher accuracy on those questions only so if i give a uh, a new question suppose to you uh, with a little bit change you may or not be able to answer it and the same thing happens with machine learning models also when we give, when we add some other data when we give, give some other data for prediction uh, it may not be able to um, correctly predict so in this case 100 uh, percent accuracy score looks uh, very impressive but this is because we have a very small data set so when we give big data set uh, then um, the scores usually comes down and there is no specific benchmark that what uh, a score you should accept for example you are going to predict if a person has covid or not now even if the accuracy is 30 percent or 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 maybe uh, um, Accuracy usually uh, will, will take a higher, uh, about 70-80% or higher. However, there is a probability, the model is saying that uh, there is a 30% chance that this person has COVID. Now, 30% is a small number, but why will I take a risk? I will get that person to get treated. Uh, however, if uh, my model says that there is a 55% chance that the stock price will increase for this company next day. So I may be, I, I may want to uh, take the bet, 55% if I can uh, take the risk, if my risk appetite is uh, strong, I can invest into it. In medical fields, we always try to give a high, to get a higher accuracy in our model. We try to get 99%. If, if a doctor says that there is a, uh, uh, a doctor says that uh, there is a 70% chance that I will save you after your surgery, uh, then maybe you will not go to that doctor. A person who is giving you higher higher uh, uh, like chances, you will go to that doctor, right? So similar thing we also uh, do with models, where we get higher uh, accuracy, we we pick those models. Now, after doing this, we are checking the prediction. So, two is for uh, Google, zero is for business manager, and one is for bachelor. It's, it's going to predict that the person who is working at Google as business manager and has bachelor degree, that person will get uh, uh, more than 100,000 salary or not. And our model says yes. If you want to check it, so Google, business manager, and bachelor. Let's go up. You see Google business manager and doesn't matter if you are uh, having a master's or bachelor's you will get hundred you will get more than hundred thousand salary so our model is correcting uh, is predicting correctly and same goes here facebook business manager and masters so one means yes that means you will get more than hundred thousand dollar salary for this combination so this is how actually um, after creating the model, this is how we do predictions. But we do not do this on uh, Jupyter notebooks or Google Colab notebooks. We do this, uh, we we put this model or we add this model on in a software or in a website. And there we give our inputs and uh, we, uh, we do the calculation and predictions. For example, calculator app in your mobile phone. So how it's calculating? So it's doing suppose uh, something like uh, uh, it's, it's going to. So when we do two plus five, okay. Now two plus five you are giving in calculator, but how the model is going to show you? Okay, I will not run this. I will need to. I had logged out, but two plus five it will show you seven. So that's uh, uh, this code, or you see the algorithm that's working behind is deployed on an environment. Or, or on a tool and uh, that's where we do the predictions but in the back end this is how the structure uh, uh, goes on that was about uh, this uh, uh, this demo and uh, okay uh, does getting 100% accuracy means good model prediction or or okay now the question has been deleted so I will not answer that now. I can't answer. The question has been deleted now. 
okay i see it now okay overfitting we decide it it's a, it may be a condition of overfitting we have to decide uh, on training and testing data we will not go into uh, those details here i mentioned that 100% accuracy in real life is not possible okay uh, we will not get a very accurate data our data set is very small and that's why it's able to give 100% accuracy um, it uh, but higher the accuracy better the model is 100% accuracy that means some, there is something wrong with your data <laughs> yeah so uh, try to change the data okay finally a decision has been made So using decision tree, uh, we can make the decisions like this. Uh, now decision tree is just one algorithm of uh, machine learning. There are many, there are more than 100 different machine learning algorithms, but we do not use all 100. There are about 10, 12, uh, which are more important and, and we use in real life. And also depending on the industries, in which industries we are working, depending on that, uh, there may be some uh, some uh, some algorithms which we use very frequently. So like decision tree, regression analysis, uh, logistic regression, uh, K-means, K-N, there are many actually. I cannot count all, <laughs> uh, but uh, we have different algorithms for different purposes and all the purpose combines to prediction either you are predicting a value or you are predicting a category so so we do prediction uh, using machine learning algorithms so 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 that that's about the demo actually and uh, And uh, now coming on the virtual internship program, I see a, there are many questions on this. So virtual internship program is basically a training come internship program of uh, NAAI. And uh, they launched it, uh, the, the company launched, launched it in uh, uh, June last year. Okay, and uh, every month they have a batches of uh, the interns who are going who take training and work on the projects. The projects are basically training projects. So you work on the project, you learn, and uh, trainings are provided. Basically, um, if uh, we talk about it uh, into, into detail, so it has a dual structure. It's a training come internship program. So there are training involved, and uh, internship um, certificates are also provided. So training and, cert and internship certificates are also provided. Uh, a diverse range of projects are there. So we'll see a couple of uh, like a, a list we will see for the for the skills that we use in the projects um extra duration is provided to help people who are like not very fast learners so some of us may uh, some of us are maybe a uh, slow learners like like me <laughs> okay so uh, we take uh, more time to learn that's okay so it's a one month program however if requested, then uh, extension is also provided that you can complete your internship in two months instead of one. So, but yes, learning should be there. If you are not working and then asking for extension, then my friend, that's a bad choice. Extensive <laughs> um, uh, learning is there. So we have self-guided resources, a curated list of self-guided resources from our technology uh, our training partners or, or like our partners like Microsoft or on the Sparks Foundation. So from NAI, it has uh, some technology partners also like Exaltiers in Singapore, the Sparks Foundation, Microsoft. So we have some courses from like some materials from them and uh, also some um, self-guided resources from LinkedIn Learning. Uh, and uh, like I mentioned earlier, the certificates are provided, one internship certificate plus whatever skills you are getting trained on you will get training certificates for those uh, 24 by 7 you will get help because we have interns from different countries and different time zones so, so there are people at times it happens that people who are in us and uh, they want some help then uh, at 5 a.m in the morning i schedule calls with them so that happens actually and also um, via whatsapp group we try to help one another 
uh, verified certificates will be there. Uh, so uh, our verification partner true certificates, they give verified certificates uh, for uh, for such training or for such internship programs, uh, such internship certificates. Uh, we uh, I also got some questions like which projects to like what are the projects. Uh, so so basically. Okay, there are some questions. Let me see. Uh, decision tree is used only for classification purpose. So regression is uh, linear regressions are used for predicting a number, but uh, decision tree is an uh, supervised learning, and it's uh, it is used for uh, it, it it is used for uh, classified classification data. Okay. Now the projects uh, are many actually. So depending on what you want to, uh, which career you want to go in, you want to go into business analysis. So learn, learn visualization tools. Okay, learn at least one BI tool uh, like Tableau or Power BI. Um, you should have a strong business understanding. You should have a strong communication skills, and you should have a strong knowledge of at least one visualization tool or BI tool we call business intelligence tool like Power BI or Tableau. So, so, so get trained on this. Uh, Excel is also very important. Excel uh, is a very underrated uh, tool, I would say, yeah. Uh, but actually um, very efficient and in most of the companies, uh, like all companies actually use either Excel or, or Google spreadsheets. So having a good knowledge of Excel is also a very important. Uh, you, you, if you don't know how to work on pivot tables or charts, uh, um, how to uh, secure your data in Excel uh, with passwords and these things, uh, then uh, uh, try to learn it, okay? Uh, you can learn Power BI also. So like in VIP program, in virtual internship program into, into this internship program, Power BI module, this training module has been developed entirely by Microsoft. So, so as a Microsoft network partner, we provide, we use that content. We are authorized to use that content for training purpose. Uh, without any change, we give training on that. And this content has entirely been developed by Power BI team of Microsoft and we deliver it. Uh, for Tableau, uh, we have a, uh, 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 our partner, the Sparks Foundation in Singapore, they have uh, created this module for Tableau, as well as for Microsoft Excel. So for business, uh, those who want to go into business analytics, you want to become business analysts, uh, learn uh, these BI tools, okay? Uh, if you have, uh, also you should have basic uh, idea of some programming language, just basics is okay. Uh, but uh, more knowledge of BI tools and uh, business understanding. Uh, those who want to go into uh, data analysis, at least one BI tool, SQL, and some programming knowledge. Now Python or R, now here we have R, here we have uh, Python. Now uh, this training program is um, focused more on Python because Python is the most popular, uh, you can say, programming language nowadays. So our our knowledge partners uh, suggested that we provide training on Python. We cover Python uh, more, and hence uh, our uh, projects like Essentials of Python Programming. So here we cover the basics, uh, basics of Python, uh, how to create uh, uh, like if else conditions, uh, loops. All these things are covered. Lists, data types, all these are covered into this training. Data manipulation, visualization using Python. So you explore Matplotlib libraries, working on data tables using data frames and Seaborn library. So data visualization, creating charts in Python. Then we have a stats, a hypothesis testing. So we, we work on stats also. That's also important. A-B testing we do um, into this uh, uh, in, into this uh, project. Uh, we have machine learning for predictive analytics. So here we work on uh, uh, customer churn data and uh, uh, we, we do some predictions using machine learning algorithms. Uh, using deep learning and CNN, we, we use image classification of uh, 
of, of people who have COVID or not. So data sets will change actually. And uh, but these are the things that uh, we actually cover into the training or in the projects uh, at the uh, we also have data analytics using uh, R. So those who are beginners and want to learn uh, R programming, you can go ahead with this. Uh, R programming is mainly used by financial companies. So in financial data, still we uh, use uh, R quite a lot. But on some other data types, actually uh, in other industries, we use Python. It's Python is more popular. And we uh, also have uh, certain clients uh, uh, projects. So if you are performing better here, we you can you can we can help you uh, get an NDA signed, and you can work on the client data as well. But you have to prove that you have a good understanding of data visualization and uh, um, stats and uh, machine learning algorithms. So when you have a better understanding of this, you can work on, we can assign you on a client also. So these are internal projects or training projects. You learn, you complete the project. Uh, we, we, we have live training sessions. So we have uh, help via WhatsApp or, or like groups and uh, uh, or through the resources that we have provided. So self-learning resources are also provided and live training we conduct for each of these projects and uh, we help you complete the project and learn the skills required inside it. And uh, uh, yeah, and if you want to uh, learn more on uh, like VIP and to apply to it, uh, we have this, uh, you can go to vip.nai and na.ai and uh, you, you should be able to get more details like uh, about the program and everything about it. You can also apply it here. So, okay, so I'm going to uh, ask, I'm going to uh, answer the questions here. So maybe the latest one first, how can I enroll in this internship? So you can go to this website, VIP at, uh, I will just uh, uh, paste it over here. Uh, let me try that. Okay, I have pasted the link for the website. You can you can open it and you can go it there. Uh, and you will get all the details here. Uh, do I need to paste something actually? So yes, this is a, since it's a combined training plus internship, we have training um, uh, programs also and uh, on the resources from uh, our, tech, our knowledge partners like Microsoft, TSF, and Jolty. So yes, we have, uh, um, um, there are there are some fees, so you can go to register now on this page, and you will see some subsidized fee uh, for it. So this subs subsidized fee were not uh, there when we started the program, so it changes actually. But the latest one you can you can uh, get to know on the on the on the website. And uh, okay, in confusion matrix, uh, false positive, false negative value is high. Uh, Accuracy 95%, can we say model is good or not? Okay, false positive, false negative. So definitely you have to look into sensitivity and specificity. Okay, recall values also you have to see. Uh, or maybe you can just calculate F1 score. Uh, and if, if you see F1 score is, is, is higher, you can, uh, you can say the model is good. 95% accuracy is good. However, while taking decision to apply on a business uh, case you have to check that um, what is the what, what what is the business problem suppose you want to classify covid uh, patients okay now to combine uh, to to um, to segregate covid patients you you may you can say that you, you, my model can classify a non covid patient as a covid patient but it should not classify a covid patient as a non-COVID patient. So false negatives, you have to see, uh, it, it should be very less, okay? False positive is still acceptable, but false negative should be less. Uh, what is the first step uh, or the roadmap to become a data scientist? First step is that uh, you you start, okay? Uh, you, you look for what knowledge, what skills are required. So today in the session, I mentioned about a couple of skills which are required to become a data scientist or data analyst. Actually, the programs that uh, 
to become a data uh, scientist, you will also look at the job descriptions. You will see that the companies will say that you should have uh, some understanding of uh, uh, at least one one programming language, either Python or R, you should have knowledge of. You should have a strong stats knowledge, and you should have uh, knowledge of at least one data visualization tool. Uh, maybe not data visualization, but at least a programming language and stats are, are required to become uh, a data scientist. So, uh, talking about the roadmap, you have to filter out the skills required, and then you plan your schedule, the resources. Uh, uh, use reliable resources to learn and uh, reliable companies from where you are getting training on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think uh, internship related. Okay. Is there any internship related to business analysis? Swati, I believe I answered your question also that uh, that uh, how uh, of which all projects you can cover when you uh, want to become a business analyst or you want to learn skills of a business analyst. Uh, any any specific question that you may have related to internship, you can write to. So let me go to that uh, website. You can go to actually here, and uh, you can uh, if you can write to this email ID if you have any specific questions or tech at any AI of the of the internship. And uh, at 75%, okay, it's 75%. Earlier it was 50%. In um, so now more discount is being offered. Great. So uh, you can write to them, and specific questions related to sponsorships, you can you can ask there. And uh, they will be able to help you out here. Um, should a bioscience student can be a data analyst? Actually, if you are interested, you can. Uh, uh, in biotechnology, now there are companies, uh, or or like in go to uh, medical sector, the demand of bioscience is, and biotechnology is higher. What biotechnology does? Suppose a few uh, uh, apps like fitness apps. What they do? They collect data. They collect the heartbeat. They collect blood pressure data of of, of the users, and then they predict that the person will uh, will uh, in future the person will have a heart attack or not. So these things uh, prediction is working there. So there is a machine learning algorithm working behind that in the app. So. There is a demand of data scientist over there also. Data scientist, data analyst, and uh, uh, business analyst. There is demand for all of them. But it's yes, you have to uh, you have to mention that uh, 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 you have to be a specific uh, what you want to learn and what you, what uh, in which uh, field you want to go. So bioscience is a broader term in a bioscience company or biotech company. Do you want a client a client facing job, business analyst side, or data analyst? You want to become or data science? You that you have to decide, and then uh, depending on that decide decision, uh, your your uh, uh, your your schedule or or your strategies will change. Uh, okay, yes, biotech is into demand. That's I that I agree. Okay, I believe confusion metrics and I I have answered. Uh, any other particular question? Uh, I see some discussions also going on. So yes, uh, decision tree is one such algorithm for classification. There are many. There are KNN, logistic regression, also these things are also there. Uh, okay, can you suggest some ML projects uh, we can add in our resume? Okay, uh, there are actually many. However, just adding, just creating a model is uh, uh, is in, not enough. Whatever you are doing, learn also how to deploy it. So actually, we do uh, in our uh, training uh, this one. Uh, in our training of this image classification using deep learning, we also give training on how to deploy uh, our model in a live environment so that a user, which is suppose uh, in a different country, can use it. 
and uh, do predictions. So uh, one, uh, one major gap that uh, we have observed that we learn on the notebooks, we learn on Python notebooks that how to write the code, but what next? How actually it works? We are opening our mobile phone, we are doing, uh, we are playing a game. So there is a code on the game. If, if I give you the code, just the code that how uh, the game has been created, uh, what is the use of it if you don't know how to deploy it? So deployment is important and that's what actually we cover uh, in this program also. We make sure that you, you have understood uh, the applications from scratch to end. And learning the code, uh, there are many resources, uh, good or bad maybe. Uh, but also understanding uh, from end to end uh, the, the applications also, it is uh, something that we should focus on. So that's actually really important. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, you can visit this website actually. Uh, you can go to, uh, if details are, uh, if you need any specific clarity. Um, it has uh, some refund policies also. You just uh, uh, mentioned on the first day, it should be, uh, okay, there, 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 there was something, some uh, refund uh, policy as well. You apply on the first day and you should be able to uh, get a refund. Uh, so, it, but just to mention on the first day because we we share personal servers logins we, we share. So, if you don't like, you apply for the program. If you don't like uh, on the orientation day after orientation, you can ask for a refund. Uh, but uh, once the resources are shared, no going back. Learn it, and whatever help you need from our team in learning those skills, we will help you to our full extent. Uh, we still have uh, our interns from previous batches also. Uh, even after, even after uh, learning that, even after uh, uh, covering, um, uh, completing the internship, they still ask questions on on some things, on some tools. So our team is always there to help you out. Okay. Uh, any other question? I think we have sort the time by eight minutes. But any other particular question that you want me to? Uh, answer related to the internship um, you can you can go to register register here any particular question you may have about intern about the sponsorship you can uh, you can just uh, write write to us on take at NAI you can write to this email ID uh, no no need to pay extra money like I mentioned that uh, uh, just give a request for for uh, for extension. Uh, give a reason, okay? At least you should uh, you should complete at least two projects, or at least one. Complete some projects, so as that you are uh, you are eager to learn. Just you, you need some more time, and we will help you out. If you are not working on any project and then asking for extension, that it's bad for you as well as for us. So in that case, so what happens? Uh, thanks for asking this question. What happens when we give extension? you get the certificate for two months okay because extension with extension you have got two months so two months internship uh, certificate you will get if you are not completing a project in first month and asking for extension we can give you but we will give you internship certificate for one month only okay uh, is there any option for working uh, class yes it's it's uh, completely flexible okay whenever you get time you learn all the training uh, uh, sessions are recorded and the links are shared with you. The training sessions are usually on weekdays conducted at 7 p.m. IST, just like today. <laughs> um, and uh, usually these are for three hours. Uh, so every alternate day we try to uh, connect either for training or for doubt clearing. So if we have training, three hours we conduct. If we have some doubts, we first answer doubts and then give, uh, then uh, uh, cover the training. So we conduct doubt sessions. We conduct live training sessions on uh, almost uh, every alternate day. If there is no question and if the projects have been covered, for example, for this month, uh, with the last training session that we had was on, uh, on Tuesday, because uh, after that, uh, their training, uh, all projects they have completed. So, so when there is no more training sessions, we still meet for doubt sessions. Uh, 
So on Sunday, they have, they are going to have a session on actually on machine learning, this project, sorry, deep learning for image classification. They are going to have a training session on, so it will be three hour training session on Sunday for this project. So that's how actually we conduct uh, weekdays, 7 p.m. usually IST and weekends usually during day, during daytime. Uh, yes, um, you can, um, uh, the recordings are provided for those who are not able to attend. So it's uh, okay, you can watch them later. It's just that you submit by, dead, by projects by the deadline. Usually it's the last Sunday of the month. Okay, I think uh, that would be all uh, for the questions. How you will get the webinar certificate? So don't worry, uh, our team will send you an email and you just need to reply to that. Maybe they will ask uh, they will ask you to fill a form. I think, uh, yes. And uh, uh, where we get projects, so these projects are actually the part of the uh, virtual internship program. You can apply to this uh, program and uh, next uh, month, uh, like uh, for new batch is starting for February and from February you can in the in the February batch you can um, you can get the list of the projects okay so that would be all I hope I answered your questions uh, we webinar certificates will be provided uh, you will receive an email uh, please uh, 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 go there maybe uh, yeah, you will get a form and uh, then you can uh, you can apply to it and you will get the certificate. Okay, so that would be all from my side. Uh, thanks everybody for joining the session and uh, hope uh, you have a great day ahead and a great weekend ahead. Stay safe. COVID is everywhere. Okay, stay safe. Bye-bye. <laughs>